Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial on creating an ASP.NET Core application with Angular 7. In the last video tutorial, we stopped at creating properties for our product list component class and now we need to install data tables API or package in order to use data tables and the properties types within our product list.component class. To install data tables, we cannot use the version from data tables.net because if we have to use this API, then we would have to use jQuery. And since we are coding using TypeScript in the backend of our Angular application, we would need to install data tables that's available for our Angular application. So this should be a package that we can use that can be installed on an Angular application through NPM. So we have that. If you go to NPM and search for data tables, Angular data tables, you will find that we can use this Angular data tables package in our application to use the data tables API. And we can have the same functionality that we see here in data tables where we have live search and sorting of elements within the table. We can use the same features through data table, Angular data tables. To install Angular data tables, we can click on the online documentation. And here, if you are using Angular JS, then you can read this documentation. But in our application, we are using the latest version of Angular, and that is Angular 7. So we will be using this documentation here. And if you see here to install the required packages, uh, we have to install jQuery first. So if we go back to our application and right click on the application and then click on the display option and select show all files. And after you have selected show all files, you can probably see your package.json file double click and open it and here you can see all the packages that are currently installed in your application. Now jQuery has been already installed so we don't need to install it again but we have not yet installed the remaining packages and we need all these packages in order to use data tables in our application. So to install all these packages first go ahead and open your terminal so let me just right click and uncheck this show file options and now on the client app right click and go to tools and click open in terminal now we have changed directory into the client app all we have to do now is run the following commands that are needed to install these packages so the first command is npm install data tables dot net dash dash save so let's do that So on a Mac, we have to make sure that we are using the sudo command before we enter the npm command because we need to have the admin access or the super user access in order to install these packages on a Mac or Linux environment. So I have used sudo npm install data tables .net dash dash save hit enter. It will ask me for my password. I'll enter my password and then hit enter from now. It will install npm will install the package data tables.net so as you see it has been successfully installed don't worry about this vulnerabilities that you see we can fix that later for now let's continue installing the required packages the next command that we have to do is npm actually sudo and then copy this data tables.net dash dt dash dash save hit enter so we have installed that as well now let's install the next command which is angular data tables we need to run this command now so let's see run this command okay now let's go ahead and run this command here 
it says add types for jQuery. We have jQuery installed, but we don't have add types for jQuery installed. So we have to install this. So let's install this and I have to use sudo. So that's installed and finally let's also install the types for datatables.net for the development environment let's do sudo and do this so you would need to install all these packages as mentioned in the installation guide in order to use data table and for this npm audit fix uh, there's some vulnerabilities in three packages so we can always run this npm sudo npm audit fix and fix the problems that you see you don't have to do this but if you want to you can fix the vulnerabilities so fixed three of three vulnerabilities and now we can close the terminal and now let's go back to our application so now we have data tables installed package installed in our application and we can use this to create properties of data tables within the product list component so the first property that we would require is we would need to create a property called as dt options the dt options property is used by the data tables api to initialize your table with the specified options now what are these options let's go back to the table that we have here on the data tables website i'm just using as an example to explain to you that let's say this is our table that's going to be loaded in the browser and when this table loads we want to initialize these tables with only 15 products because we might have thousands of products in our database but we don't want to show all thousand on one page and we want to use pagination for that so we want to initialize the table with the option to show 10 products on each view and then we want to sort the order of products probably by its name or maybe the order date depends and so therefore we have to create these options and these options will be then used to initialize this table if you go to angular data tables and you go to the basic exam basic examples section and then you click on this one with zero configuration and there's one with options if you click on the options you will see if you want to use all these options like these you have to make sure that you create a property called as dt options and make sure the naming convention is the same so don't use your own naming convention the api will read the properties by its name so you have to use the same name so dt options so what we want to do is to set these options let's copy this property here go back here and let's create this property it is empty because we have not yet initialized what options we want we will do that in the ng on it method which is used to initialize the components in the class but for now we are still creating our properties so let's continue doing that so the next property that we need here in our data tables is a trigger a data table trigger the trigger will ensure that the data that is required to be rendered inside the table is fetched first and then only it is rendered onto the table so this property here dt trigger makes sure that the data the product data is first fetched and then it is displayed onto the table so if you once again want more documentation on how to use it you can go ahead and read it on the option which says angular way and here you see in this example they have also used a trigger and there's more information given and if you, you look at the uh, documentation there's a comment here saying we use the trigger because fetching the list of persons which means the persons array they are fetching the information and then storing it into the persons array can be quite long which means that they have a long list of persons and therefore to ensure that the data is fetched first which means that they will first go and get all the data of the persons and then they will display it onto the table so as you see there's like almost 150 pages of 150 uh, pages of these tables that contains the data well so a trigger is used to make sure that the data is first fetched so we would create that property called as dt trigger and 
it's going to be of type observable subject and we will leave it as any because our data which the which needs to be rendered inside the table uh, contains different type of data types so it's not just string so we will leave it as any and then we will create a new subject every time the trigger is uh, initialized or the trigger is requested to get the information so it might sound a bit confusing that how we use DT trigger but don't worry I will be using that as we proceed coding this data table uh, so you will learn how to use it because we also have to make sure that we have used this attribute in the HTML or in the design of the list component so don't worry if it's confusing I will explain in detail how to use it when we code this so the next uh, property that we would need is a data table directive called as DT element now what is this DT element now we all know that we want to display a table correct and we have imported all the required packages that will make sure that the table is designed and then displayed onto the browser so we, we will not go and manually create the table inside the design of our component so all we have is the header and the column names and some buttons for editing and deleting the products but we are not creating each row manually we so if we have like thousands of uh, products we are not creating each row manually that will be created by the data table api correct right? so to create that element data table element that table itself we will need a property for the model we have written the code over here that is view child template and we have created this template uh, I, the model with the ID template over here but for the data tables we don't know that how many products are going to be uh, fetched from the database so we don't know that so there can be thousand there can be five so we cannot go ahead and create only five rows because if there are thousand products then where they would not be displayed only five products will be displayed therefore data table does that for us the data table api so we need to create a template property that will hold this for us so that template property is called as data table directive and we will name it as dt element so using the view child decorator as we used for a model we will use the data table directive and then call this property as dt element and which is going to be of type data table directive so now we are seeing this error because we have not imported the data table directive class from angular data tables and therefore we would need to add that statement manually so we will add it import data table directive from angular data tables we have already installed angular data tables when we install the required packages so now we should not see any errors so that should be it for all the data table properties that we need now only one thing that we want to do is initialize the values for our options so and we have to do it in the ng on it method so let's initialize this dt options with the required options that we want so dt options and is equal to since we initialize this assign this an empty array now we need to initialize this so to initialize this with the options the first option will be the paging type so paging type and the intelligence will give you the options so paging type and you can read paging type displays button options basic type numbers 1 10 8 so it's going to pagination button display option so how you want to display the pagination buttons on your table you know so it's it look it takes care of that option so that property is called as paging type so let's use that and how do you want that paging type so so the value we will say is going to be full numbers full underscore numbers 
we don't want any decimals or anything so we want full numbers so next is the page length so how many products so let's do page length and the length the number of rows that you want to display per page is uh, taken care by the page length property so the page length i'm going to leave five rows per uh, table view if you want to increase that or you can do it as per your requirement so next we want to uh, set the width so this another property called as auto width so do you want auto width width to be true so based on the width of the based on the values that we are receiving so in our table let's say we have a description column for the product and that has like about 200 characters in it and that's like overflowing so based on the uh, number of characters it will auto adjust the width or the width of the column so do you want that to be true so i will say true for now you guys can leave it true and if you don't like it you can change it to false and the order uh, initial order how you want to apply the sorting order of the table so order so let's for the order we will use two square brackets here and inside that again two square brackets and then we will say zero comma descending this means that the first column which is at position zero we want the sorting order to be descending so if you want any columns to sort the table based on any column so let's say this is zero this is one this is two so if you want to sort the table based on the second column which is first name so you will change this to one since the first column of my product table is going to be the product id so i want to sort it based on the product id I will use the zero column so that should be it to initialize this table uh, data table and uh, we should be done with this video tutorial in the next video tutorial we will initialize the remaining properties in our uh, in our product list component class and then we will start coding the required methods that we need to fetch this data and display it onto the data tables so guys also we have to do one more important thing is inside my table here let me go to the products so here we need to install font awesome icons on these buttons for edit delete and to add uh, so we will do that in the next video tutorial i'll show you how we can uh, install font awesome library so now that's it for this so thank you for watching this video tutorial please like and subscribe my channel tech Holly.